All right. Good morning, my Leak Code Problem Solving Friends, and happy Monday. It's 5.40 in the a.m., and I'm planning on doing Leak Code Contest 334 last Saturday, virtually. Share my screen here. Okay, here we go. Okay, 334. It's time to shine. All right, open these guys up. Left and right prefix sums. Non-inclusive of the endpoint, okay. And it goes length of A and left equals zero times N, right equals zero and N for our I N one range one to N, J equals N minus one minus I. The one in front of it, right? Actually, don't be two, right? Uh, one, yeah, I'll do two. This one plus that one. Actually, yeah, I suppose we can start it at two and then do L sub one equals A sub one. If n, n equals one, then we'll just return zero. Make sure there's room for the corner case, r sub n minus two equals a sub n minus two. Does that look right? Twenty-two. It's off by one, right? That's really strange. The prefix sum is off by one. Okay. Let's do this from one. L sub i plus equals a sub i plus uh, or minus one, right? <laughs> this guy is that guy. Plus L sub I minus one. R sub J plus equals A sub J plus one plus R sub J plus one. Return. The absolute value of left sub I R sub I or I in range in. Uh oh. Oops. Subtracted by that guy. Looks good. Oops, I didn't time this one. Let's see. That took about four minutes. Okay. About four minutes for implementation in Python 3, which is accepted. Yay! Nothing too fancy, right? So just the odd prefix sums. And it's odd in that the endpoints are non-inclusive. OK, a few solutions. Let L and R. Oops be the prefix sums from left to right and right to left correspondingly of the uh, 
input array. Oops, Kotlin. Oops, the end of the way. JavaScript, oops. Python 3, oops. Rest, C++. Okay. Yeah, that looks good. Nothing too fancy. To JavaScript. 46 a.m. Right, nothing too fancy, just the prefix sums and then return an array of those zipped values, right? Use low dash and zip them. <laughs> yeah. Oops, uh, MSP. Good. Okay, five forty-six, five forty-seven a.m. About one minute for implementation in JavaScript, which is accepted. Yay! And nothing too fancy. Okay, I'll do Kotlin next. 48 a.m. On to the left. Right. Turn zero until n dot map at the ads. So bit minus minus r sub bit to int array. It's good. It's good. Five forty nine. About one minute, right? One minute for implementation. Oops. In the Kotlin, which is AC. Yay. Okie dokie. Kotlin JavaScript Python three. Do rest in C. Here. Oops. All right, those are relative offsets. And then the 
answer transform so do immutable lambda Oops, I got to do a back inserter, right? Back inserter, answer. Okay. Uh oh. Uh, I got to capture L and R by reference. Looks good. All right, that's cool. Let's just stick that on one line. Good enough, nothing too fancy. I just map that and then rest. Save the best for last and most difficult for last. Okay, shorten this up a little bit. <coughs> After Filled with zero as a size n. To n non-inclusive. So I goes the one to the left. J goes one to the right. Zero to n non inclusive to map each ith value to, oops, hold on. L sub i minus r sub i dot absolute value dot, oops, hold on dot iter dot collect into a vector of integers. Uh -oh. oh, oops, I don't need an iter for a range, right? Just boom, straight up. Looks good. That's cool. Okay. Let's move on, nothing too fancy, right? Let L and R be the prefix terms from left to right, branch to left correspondingly, and then put array A, right? Looks good. Okay, yeah, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's good enough. One hour, 17 minutes remaining in the contest for Q2. One hour, 17 minutes, and it is 5.54 in the a.m. Zero to I inclusive. It goes three prefixes that's divisible one, two, skip that one. Skip that one. That's okay, and that's okay. How do we find the divisibility of any word there with prefix? M is up to a billion. This one's 
a hundred thousand. Wonder if eighty two forty four is it did two forty four divided by three. Okay, yeah. So we can trim the left. Maybe use a sliding window. Uh, that'll be the game plan. Game plan. Sliding window size up to nine. I the max. M is one billion. All right, so once we reach that size, then we can All right, here's our array of characters and uh, M is okay. We should just do S is fine, right? So it's our string. Okay, and then we'll just do this uh, k equals nine. That'll be our sliding window size. Ijn equals zero, zero, length of s. Well, j is less than n. We'll always slide the window to include t is our total value, or let's just do x. x is our value within our our string. Actually, let's just, just transform it to, might be less efficient, but it'll be more concise code. Return the count. OK. And j plus equals 1, right? We slide the window. If j minus i, if it exceeds k, then we'll shrink i, i, right, shrink the window. x is the integer value of s to i, j inclusive. If it's IJ inclusive, J plus one to make it inclusive. Okay, so count plus equals not X modulus M. Right, if it's evenly divisible, then it's fine. Uh oh. Three is not a by value expected. What? Why not? Integer to String to an integer, right? Cast it to an integer. Huh, let's see. Another string to int. Oops. What's this guy doing here? You just put an int in there, right? I found supers not difficult, I thought. Come on. What the heck? Right, so it should be one. 
heck? Come on. Cheapest. Since object is not iterable. What? It still doesn't like that. What is going on here? Oh, it's a list. Okay, it's a list. I see. Okay. Zeros and ones. I see. Okay. It's not a count. Okay. It's a list. All right. That makes more sense. Like, what is going on here? Okay. All right. So we have an answer, right? Answer will be our array. Okay. And answer dot append. One if zero. Yeah. Okay. One, one if X. Which was M of zero. That does not look right. I to J X. Let's do this for now. Just focus on the first one. And that does not look right, does it? What do we got here? Hold on. It should be fine. It's of size nine. Oh, okay, so it should be 10 then, right? Nine. J plus one. <coughs> Okay, let's do J not inclusive then, right? I'll just work out better. J non inclusive. Doesn't look right there. X modulus M L zero print X X modulus M. Zero. Is this thing like an operator precedence type issue? Like what's going on here? If it's zero, then we should be appending zero. Oh, oh. Oh, it's backwards, okay. One one zero 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 one one zero zero. Okay, that looks good. And this guy zero one zero one. Uh oh, there's one extra at the end. One extra at the end. Uh oh, that doesn't not look right. G not inclusive. Okay, so. J. Okay, when you add one, then it could be equal to in at the end there. Okay, so that's good. Right, one zero zero. That looks good. That's good. Okay. Oh no. This guy is off. 
Okay, 554 to 605. Okay, that took about 11 minutes for wrong answer. Where's my dude? Oh, that guy. Oh, <laughs> that's okay. Failing forward is my number one go to. So, what's wrong here? This one's wrong at this position. All right. Three, four, five, six. All right, so n equals 16. And then it's wrong at. Wrong at this guy, third index thirteen. Okay, so I put zero, but it's expected to be one. So it's supposed to be evenly divisible by. So what is it? Six. M equals six. Where is I at this point? G's at 13, so I should be at three. No, that's not right. The rest should be a bunch of ones. I J not inclusive. The size of i to g non inclusive is g minus i. Let's just print this out. i to j equals i j s sub i to j. Let's just do this. Oops. So I to J. X does M. X does M. Okay, let's do this. Stick that there. Build up my test case. Okay. Forty-eight, forty-six, blah 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 blah. Zero one one. Zero one one two three four. It's not right. Something's off in my calculation here. So once the side window gets one, two, three, one, two, three. Yeah, I don't want that change, right? If it exceeds K, right? If it's non-inclusive and exceeds k, then it's 11. 
Whereas we can only have up to 10, right? Oh, wait a sec. Hold on. Is that... Oh, maybe we can't do the window the way I'm doing it then. We need the whole prefix without I. Up to J. That is right. I wonder if turning it into an integer will cause a problem though. Let's see what happens. So I need to make this more efficient, but this should be the correct solution. Let's see if it TLEs or whatever for the real big integers. Yeah, okay, that'll TLE. So not. Okay, so, oops, All right, that's way too big. I don't want to stick that test case in here. Question is, uh, how do you make this more efficient? Right, instead of taking every single prefix, I wonder if you go from right to left instead of left to right. Did that make sense? Is there a prefix? Is there a suffix? Track the ongoing mod as we as we go. All right, multiply it by ten and track the ongoing mod. Rich character and, and string s. T equals 10 times T plus integer. C minus the the ASCII ordinal value of that character minus the ASCII ordinal value of zero to offset it. Modulus M. One, if not T, L zero. That looks good. Stick this gigantic thing in here. All right, it shouldn't TLA, right? Okay, it's, it's massive. Yay, okay, so 55 minutes left. Okay, zero hours, 55 minutes left. So that took 17, 23 minutes, right? So 23 minutes for AC plus one bug. 
Not too shabby. Yeah, it could be worse, could be better. Could be better, could be worse, right? Okay, so T is our total. I wonder if we can shorten this up a little bit too. Yeah, that's pretty succinct, right? And to affect the readability if I do this differently, I think. Yeah, that's good enough, whatever. Solutions, on three. Let T be the ongoing accumulated um what do you want to call this thing? Each character of S modulus M. Each corresponding digit of the input string S. Oops, let, let T be the ongoing accumulated mod. Of digits, I guess base 10 digits, of the input string S. Right, let me formulate the answer, I guess, yeah. Simulate mod M. Oh, good enough, okay. Cutlin. All right, I guess if you want more details, you read the problem statement, right? <laughs> Need to spoon food, folks. All right, go read. All right. Six eighteen AM. Shorten this up a little bit. There's our string. T is our total. Turn the answer in the end. Oops. Each character in S T equals ten times T plus character minus zero. Back TX one works right. Uh oh, this is your overflow T. Oops, modulus M, right? Sam, it's overflow. Oh, okay. Okay. That is not right. I want to negate T. T. That looks good. Okay, cool. Six eighteen. 6.20 a.m., about two minutes for the implementation. Play meditation and C++, which is accepted. Yay. OK. 
Okay. Let's shrink up Python a little bit, right? Just make it a little bit more succinct. Nothing too fancy. All right, keep it super simple. Okay, C++, let's do JavaScript. String, totals. And then the answer, turn here at the end. Let's see the list of splits, array of characters, equals 10 times T. Don't forget to mod this thing. Plus M plus the ASCII ordinal value of C dot char code at zero minus zero dot char code at zero and dot push T looks good. All right, that's cool. Oh, I didn't time it, but probably took in the vicinity of about a minute or two. <clears throat> okay, Kotlin, string, and equals immutable list of integers, which will transform into an integer array. For each character in the input string S, let's do this. and answer pair of zero in this guy. Okay, t equals 10 times t plus c dot two int minus got a long zero dot two int ask your ordinal value hands dot add if T is equal to zero and one, otherwise zero. Uh oh, cannot be applied to long and int. Uh oh. Oh, oops, needs to be it's M. That looks good. Okay, cool. All right, Kotlin JavaScript, Python 3, and then we'll do rest. All right. Oops, type, yeah, it goes vector of i32s. Let me shorten this up a little bit. Here will answer. Vector, return the answer in the end for C and S of chars. Let's do this. T, middle answer. Zero is I64. All right. T equals 10 times T plus C as you eight. I think that works right. Minus. Zero as U eight modulus M and it's a push. If T is equal to zero, we'll push one, otherwise we'll push zero. And let's see what happens here. Do to borrow the C sixty four and U eight, okay. As I sixty four. Oops. In the parentheses, right? Big money, no whammies. What is this expected? And I thirty two. Okay.
that does yeah that looks right okay okay that's cool all right let t be the ongoing accumulated mod of base 10 digits of the input string s C, digit C, each character C. <clears throat> yeah, that looks good, right? Nothing too fancy. Okay. And we have 44 minutes left on Q3. Okay. 44 oops or 40 minutes left in the contest go grab some more coffee here real quick be right back Okay, find the maximum number of marked indices. Maximum number of marked indices. That equals two, J equals one. Multiply it by two. Zero, one, two, three. One and two. I and J can be used once each. Okay, I mean, it makes sense to pre-process the input, right? Game plan, pre-process the input. I sort it. All right, so we can know which ones we'll want to consume and then go from Maybe from right to left. So if example one, it's two, three, four, five. We want to go from right to left, I suppose, right? Right, and then move I to the left. Well, twice I doesn't fit into J. I think that works. Two, five, four, nine. 
two, four, five, nine is the sorted values. Oops. And then J will be this guy, I will be that guy. No, match is found. Oops, hold on. All right, for this input, like that's no good. That's no good. Oops. That one's good. Choose I and J and then make J I minus one. All right, so from right to left. Then perform a linear scan from right to left to find each i, j pair. Turn the count of i, j pairs at the end here. And then this guy, so this example one, this is example two, that one's no good. I is cool here. Right, initially, go from this guy to that guy. Okay, count is two. And then we shrink it up so that I guess J would be the next candidate down, right? And then I would also be the next candidate down. And then a plus equals two. J will be the next one not seen though, right? Not used. So we have to mark this one is used. That one is used. Yeah, we can mark them as seen. That should be fine, right? Scene is a set and return the link. Scene, write the cardinality of the set scene. And then let's do this, right? So for I sort A, oops, I in. And there's the length of A. Actually, we don't need to use that more than once. Range, oops. Length of A reversed, right? Oops, reverse. Reverse, that guy. I think that works. First and uh, reversed. Okay. Zero, one, two, three. Right. Okay. If I and scene, actually, these would be J. Actually, let's just do this. I, J equals. How big is this thing? If it's size one, then it's no good. Okay, n equals length of a, if n equals one, turn zero. Right, there is no ij pair in that case. Okay, and then we sort it. Okay, so this one's n minus two, and that guy's n minus one. While i is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so while i is greater than or equal to zero and not 
a sub i should be left by one, right? Multiply by two basically. Uh, is less than or equal to a sub j i minus equals one. Should I say if it's no good, then we subtract it. Otherwise, if it is good, let's see. Just say it is good and let's multiply it by two so it's not hard to read. If it's good, then we say okay, J minus equals one. Otherwise, I minus equals one, and then we have to keep track of whether I and J have been seen. Okay, so if I in scene, I minus equals one, continue, if J in scene, J minus equals one, continue, oops. We'll clean up this code here in a little bit, right? I should be in front of J or J is less than or equal to I. Right, well, let's scoot I forward. To the left. Okay, so this is means it's cool. Scene dot add i and scene to add j. I think that works. Let's see what happens here. Uh oh, looks like it got stuck. Hmm. I'm just kind of getting stuck. Should be this, right? I and J. Oh, it doesn't go anywhere. Oh, yeah, if it's no good. Keep J as big as it can be. Two, four, and zero. Looks good. Uh oh Now puts twenty big expect twenty six. So I, I think greedy is still correct, but it must be really consuming. Suboptimal 
3D consumption. Yeah, optimize this thing then, right? Question. These guys to come here. Okay. Let's print the sorted values and see what's going on here. And just he's seen. So expect three additional pairs are missing, right? Are missing three pairs. Six count of six. Oh, all of them should match up. So n equals 26. All right, so all 26 should have a solution. Can we just fold it? Zero through twelve and thirteen through twenty five. What if we do that? Match each of these guys up. Zip the first and second half together. Does that work for these other ones though? Let's see. Um, this guy, two, three, oops, four and five. If we zip it, then we have two and three match up with, oops, four and five. Oh, huh. yeah, it does, okay. All right. Well, does that work for odd? Length. No, it doesn't work for odd length though, right? But it does show us where we want our candidates to be, right? I should initially be n divided by two. All right, whereas j is the last one. I think. N divided by two. Let's see what happens here. 24, we're missing one. Minus one is 26, so it'd be 13. Oh, minus one, 12. Okay, that looks right. And then let's do this to make sure we didn't break other stuff. No regressions. Okay, looks good. Where my print statements? Big money, no whammies, yay! Okay, so that works to start at the left half. And I wonder, is it safe to just to pin zero and zip it? If it's an odd length, I think we can clean this up, right? So it's accepted at, let's see, we've got 25 minutes left. 25 minutes left. So that took, what, 19 minutes? 
plus one bug. Oops. 19 minutes, right? Hmm, I'm not too shabby. Okay, yeah, so. Let's do this. If n is odd, just do a dot append zero as a dummy placeholder after we sort it. So we can zip it the first and second half. Candidates be zipping the first and second half of A. Divide by two to that guy. Let's do this. Is this guy to half and forwards? Trying to make the scene. Actually, we just do count in this case, right? We don't need to count plus equals two for each pair scene that works. Okay. Count for A, B, and each candidate. If A times two is less than or equal to B, count plus equals two. Let's see what happens here. That looks good, okay, cool. Oh, no. Wrong answer, 60, but we expect 64. Okay, so that must not be a safe move then, in this case, to pin zero to the sorted values. What is a safe move then? Let's say n is three. Let's do this guy. Actually, let's just do one, two, one, one, and two. How about? So it should be one pair. Two can match up. Oh, we can, I suppose we can move this one in the middle then. This one in that case, right? Skip this guy. Plus. Oops. N, N1. So if it's odd, you skip that one. K onwards, right? Does that work? Oh, N, oops, I'm not N. Big N. Okay, that looks good. And then make sure this one's cool. Should be 64, not 60. Oh, no, it's not right. Okay, so let's, let's do this. Print the candidate. Stick this here. Grab this guy just to test with. Print our candidates. Oops. Let's do candidates.
Mm, that's plus one. Oh wait, hold on. I don't want to do this. Okay, that looks good. That that, that should be right, right now. No, that's not right. Let's sort sixty-four. the size of this thing 68 68 all the four should line up then um it doesn't quite line up right then to zip it Okay, that doesn't work. Okay, so we still need to slide the window then. IJ scene. Okay, we can just clean this code up a little bit though, right? And then to get the languages. This is the initial solution I had for the failed refactoring. Right, so it doesn't quite line up right. Okay, so if I is in scene or J is in scene, we skip past those, or if J is less than equal to I. J is cool here. How would I and J be in scene? J will only be moved down if we consume it, and I is always moved down. Half, zero, and divided by two, minus one, okay. That's good, okay. The logic's quite a bit more succinct, right? So. Only move J when we consumed it and always move I. Okay. That's a pretty decent solution, right? Two minus one. Yeah, we don't need to make it perfect, but that's good enough. Okay. A few solutions. Let's see. Sort the input array A. Then consume index i, uh, I guess, pairs of index i, j, greedily, right? And I guess we don't need c either, do we? Just do the count, right? All right. Count plus equals two. Turn the count to the end. Uh oh. Count plus equals two. Like, wait a minute. That looks good, right? Yeah, it makes it a little bit simpler. If a sub i times two is the strange of a sub j. I guess it's worth noting that I is right, and initialize I to the last element of the first half of the input array 
a initialize or I J to to the index of the last element of the first and second half of the input array A correspondingly, right? All right, I think that looks good, All right? Start the input array A, initialize, I and J to the index of the last element of the first and second half, the input array A correspondingly, then agree they consume pairs of index I, J, if, and only if that guy, okay. That predicate is satisfied, we're good to go. All right, okay. Cutland, JavaScript. From right to left. Okay, so the input array initialize i and j to the index of the last element of the first and second half of the input array before respondingly. And from from right to left, greedily consume pairs of index i, j, if and only if i times two. So let's run code j. All right, that works. Right? Okay. okay. JavaScript, oops, down three, rest. C plus plus. Okay, okay. Oops. Grab this guy. Okay. Looks good. How much time do I have left? I have a little bit of time for Q four, maybe. Let's see. How long this takes? I don't think it'll take too long. Oops, that size. Right. Count. Turn the count in the end, and then if n is one, turn zero, there's no pairs. And then to uh, j is make pair. And divided by two minus one and minus one. Wow, I is cool. Okay. Decrement I each time, and then if a sub I times two, oops, plus two or equal to a sub j, then my minus minus j count plus equals two. Good. Uh oh. Divide by two minus one and minus one. That one's cool. Oh, I need to sort it. Sort. Sort of for greedy consumption. Here we go. Looks good. Okay, JavaScript. And to return here in the end. N is one, zero, sort A. And 
send in order and then I I J equals at the floor and divided by two minus one and then minus one while I squared zero. I still come into I in the case of I times two is less than or equal to base of J. And I use that. I come at the count of pairs by two. And we're good to go. <laughs> Looks good. Okay, that's cool. Cutlin. And let's see the size. Turn the count to the end here. Count to zero. Okay, and then if n equals one, I guess we can stick this down here. Turn zero. Okay, that sort. Count that will return here, and then j equals a pair, n divided by two minus one, n minus one. While oops, I is in bounds, okay. if a sub i times two is less than or equal to a sub j, decrement j, increment the count by two. Oops, there we go. Looks good. Looks good. Big money, no whammies. Okay, cool. And then Rust, save the best for last year. Vector of I-32s. Turn the count. Oops. That's N equals that length F and is equal to one. Ah, try zero. Sort the input array A. Let's to make me readable. Oops, no. Cancel what we want, and then let I be J. And divide by two minus one, and minus one. Oh, no. I exceeds from eight zero, it's in bounds, then if a sub i times two, let's say a sub j, then we'll decrement j, decrement the count by two, and we'll always decrement i. Looks good. Uh oh. One by two minus one. What? Uh oh, and divide by two minus one. And this one, it has to be at least two. What? Oh, 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 okay. I thirty two. Wait a sec. If it exceeds zero, if it's equal to zero, it's fine. Let's just do this loop. If I equals zero, then we'll just break. I have to deal with the U size. Otherwise, we'll just decrement I, right? Okay, this should be cool. 
That is good. Okay, there we go. <laughs> In return account. Eh. Oops. We don't need to say return the count, right? It's pretty obvious. Okay. Start the input array A. Initialize I and J to the index of the last element of the first and second half. Actually, let's just do this. Initialize I and J to the first and second half of the sorted. Input array. I like that a little bit. That's, that looks good. <laughs> Okay, cool. All right, and we have three minutes, 50 seconds left. Uh, I think I'll just save Q4 for another time, right? Uh, I don't think I'm gonna solve it in three minutes, so I might as well not take a sneak peek, <laughs> right? All right, cool. So I'll upsolve that one later, and yeah, I'll catch you all next time.